splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light When darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. In age to age he stands. rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The love of God, the faith of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Beacon, New York, where together we are bridging worlds, encountering God and healing lives. I am Dawn Seymour and whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever your background, we are glad you have joined us and hope that you find just what your soul needs today. If you have a candle with you, we invite you to light it with us now as a reminder of the light of Jesus in all times and places. We're being creative today. Let's continue with the prayer of confession. Creation's heart, we look around and see how we fall short in our attempts at faithfulness. We often do things not because it is what you call us to do, but in hopes of earning points with you. We can become so self-absorbed. We cannot see the suffering and struggles of friends, family, and strangers. We are so desperate to get to the front of the line. We push aside the very ones you seek to honor. Forgive us, Holy One. Remind us that the cup we are offered overflows with grace, that the waters of baptism cleanse and make us new. 
and that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the one who calls us to service, standing by our side as we seek to be faithful disciples. If you have water and a container, we invite you to pour the water with us as a reminder of the grace and power of baptism. The one who poured the foundations of creation fills us with grace and hope. The one who numbered the clouds tips us over rain barrels of living water into our parched souls. The one who writes anthems for the early morning stars fills us with songs of joy. The one who provides food for all living things feeds us with mercies which come fresh and new each day. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. We invite you to type your greetings of peace into the comment section as we sing our next song. Hi friends, it's been a little while, but I'm so happy to be back giving the children's message today. I wonder, do any of you play on a team? Do you participate as a group in something where you all have to work together to make it happen? I wanted to share with you a story about when I was younger. Little, like, I don't know, 10, 11 maybe? My father wanted me to play softball. So he signed me up every year to be on a team. I hated playing softball. I really hated it. And you know why? Because I wasn't any good at it. I was actually terrible at it. I was the worst kid on the team. 
I struck out every time. I never hit the ball. I can't remember one time I ever hit the ball. And I missed every ball in the field. They put me way out in right field where no one ever hits the ball. And on the rare occasion when somebody did, I missed it every single time. It was just agonizing to go to the games and the practices. I just, I felt so bad about myself all the time. And some of the other girls would be talking about me and kind of snickering because I was just bad at it. But there was one girl on the team that I went to school with. Her name was Rhonda and she was amazing. She wasn't just good. She was the best player on the team. She didn't just hit the ball every time. She hit home runs. And she she was the shortstop. You know, that's usually the best player on the team. She caught every ball. She made all the outs. She won the game every time for the team. I was always in awe of her because she was so amazing. But you know what was the best thing about her? When everyone else was making fun of me for striking out, she was always nice to me and encouraging. And she always tried to help me. And that made me feel good. And I never forgot that about her. And even in school, she was like that all the way through high school to everybody. She was always kind and caring and really super helpful. And she became, as a grown up, an amazing women's basketball player. And I don't know if she's still doing it now, but she became a professional coach for a women's basketball team in Texas. She's very successful and very well known. But I can tell you what most people know her for is how kind and caring she is to others. And in our Bible story today, we hear about two of Jesus' disciples who wanted to be the most special of the disciples. They asked Jesus if they can sit one on his right and one on his left. And the other disciples, as you can imagine, you remember there are 12 disciples, not just two, there are 12. So the other disciples get really jealous about it and they're saying, what's going on here? That these two disciples think they get to sit next to Jesus. What's wrong with us? So Jesus told the disciples, lots of people who want to be better than anybody else, that's not okay. It can't be that way with the ones who follow Jesus. Jesus said, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave to all. Do you know what it means to be a servant? To be a servant to someone means giving up doing something for yourself to do something for someone else instead. It sort of means living your life for someone else. Jesus wants us to be like the girl on my softball team, to be really helpful and kind and caring to others. Not to think about ourselves first, but to put others first and to do what we can to help others to be their best. Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God looks like right here in front of us. The kingdom of God is not some far away place that we dream about but it's where we live right now. So I bet you have lots of opportunities when you are out with your friends to be a servant, to be a helper and a good supporter. So let's pray about it, okay? Repeat after me if you can. Dear God, would you help us to be servants, to be helpers, to be more like Jesus, loving others whenever we can. It might be hard, so we are asking you to help us because with you, God, all things are possible. Thank you for loving us and help us to always love you and love others more. Amen. 
Thanks, friends. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 10, 35 through 45. Hear now God's word for you this day. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, be with us. Speak to us of eternal things and transform us that we might be committed and faithful disciples. In your name we pray. Amen. Do you remember the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray? Every day he wakes up, he's living the exact same day over and over and over again. Perhaps the impetus for that movie was Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. I know it sounds crazy, but I say that tongue in cheek, of course. But here we are almost to the end of the Gospel and Jesus is continuing to need to explain what the disciples cannot understand or are not paying attention to. Jesus must, on some level, feel like he's stuck in a loop. But this is also a continuation of the text we heard last week, where the author, after the rich man, asked how he can attain eternal life. Jesus said he loved him. And today's pericope is no exception. No matter the ridiculous things the disciples do or say, the things they mess up or don't understand. No matter how many times Jesus has to say it over and over and over and over, they are consequently, and we, loved. I can only imagine what it must be like to have been the disciples, being with Jesus day and night every single day, following him, being at his feet as he taught, having that front row seat to his miracles, seeing people's lives being transformed right in front of you. It had to have been a powerful experience. I can understand how James and John thought they were in the in crowd and would want to continue that close relationship with Jesus, not only here on earth, but in glory as well. The few verses in between our text from last week and this one is Jesus explaining his road to the cross. And rather than picking up on Jesus' suffering and death, 
they look at what might be in it for them. Their entire focus is pure selfish ambition. After all, they gave up everything to follow Jesus, as we heard last week. Surely this is their payday, their turn to reap the reward for their sacrifice. Perhaps that is what they were thinking when they asked Jesus if they can drink from the cup that Jesus will drink from. Perhaps they were thinking, well, gee whiz, we've been right beside you the whole time, Jesus. Of course we can do anything you can do. Then, of course, the others are furious that James and John thought they were going to get in line first. There were 12 of them the entire time. What made two of them more special than the rest? And I don't say any of this to pick on the disciples at all. Being human and thinking about the situation they were in, I can see how it all played out. Can't you? We read the Gospels and shake our head at the disciples all the time and say, they just don't get it. But it's more than that. It's their human nature at play. The disciples hold up the mirror to see ourselves in relation to what Jesus offers, to what Jesus is teaching. What is blocking the disciples from understanding the full breadth of Jesus' teaching in plain sight is selfish ambition, greed, rivalry, and anxiety. The anxiety that they might be left out, that they might be left behind, that they might not be loved as much as the others. These feelings are ones that cut the deepest. Once again, Jesus is making it clear, crystal clear, that to follow him is not easy. There is a cost. There is a sacrifice. The price is high. We must give up our comfort, our need for control, our desire to be loved, wanted to be first more than anyone else. We must be willing to know that be a, to be a servant to others is the greatest gift of all. And this will be our focus as the session takes on the right sizing conversation this week and subsequently brings that conversation to the congregation. It will no doubt in some ways be painful to imagine what the church will need to let go of in order to be reborn. But if we hear Jesus' words in the Gospel of Mark, it has the potential for freedom. There's so much weight that accompanies the worry of getting ahead, of measuring up, of having enough. It burdens us. It keeps us awake at night. And quite honestly, it exhausts us. To be a servant, to know with utter confidence we are chosen, forgiven, loved as one of the kingdom of God, to give ourselves freely to others and not expect anything in return, that releases us. It releases that burden. It fills us with the truth of who we are in Christ. And our reflection is then a beaming outward of the light of the love of Christ. To give of oneself is a far greater gift. I watched William Shatner get out of the little spaceship last night. Perhaps you did, as you did too. As he traveled in space, he was all choked up about what a beautiful and wonderful experience it was. And I listened to the newscast about it and all I could think of was what a small life. What a small life that one needs to travel so far away from the people of God to know the beauty of the universe, of creation. And that isn't a slam on William Shatner. I, I don't know him or Jeff Bezos. 
But the city of God is among mortals. It's here, among the tears and breaking hearts. It's here where we break bread and figure out how to get by one more day. It's here where we lift one another up, share our coat even if we only have one, dry a tear and a hug. It is where we remind each other that through the death, the life, and the resurrection of Christ, we are not bound by our lesser selves. We are never bound to a Groundhog Day life, but always receiving an invitation to a new life, a new beginning filled with love and grace and mercy. And this is why Jesus calls the disciples to take up their cross if they want to follow him. Why we are being called to do the same. Come, come, be crucified to the ways of this world. Because the future is always beginning now through Christ. A future brimming with hope. Amen. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God 
as something to be exploited. But empty himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As always, if there's any way First Presbyterian can be of assistance to you, please contact the church office at office at beaconpresbychurch.org or call 845-831-5322. And if you would like to support the ongoing ministry of First Presbyterian Church, you can send a donation to 50 Liberty Street, Beacon, New York, 12508, or give an online contribution through our website, beaconpresbychurch.org. Stay connected to the life and people of FPC by joining our First Presby Community Facebook group, as well as sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. And now, a blessing. May you be at peace wherever you are. Remember those who are out in the world. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wherever you are, may the love of God, the faith of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen.